I'm Seth from CMS. And we're here to talk about the Higgs seminar for the US LHC blogs. So this is the first time we've seen the field results, right, Seth? So I've not That's seen right. CMS's results before today. And we haven't seen that as Yeah, and there, there sure was a lot in those talks. I know members of the public watching them must have been completely flummoxed. To be honest, uh, <laughs> we were pretty flummoxed too. Because yeah. I, for example, work on only you know one one channel on CMS, this Higgs to BB bar channel, uh, that wasn't figured very prominently because it's not the biggest one. And then to see all these other channels, you know, you can only show a few details for each one. So exactly, and I've not been involved with any standard model uh, Higgs searches directly myself. So most of what I understood was from what colleagues and friends have talked about and discussed in the past. So for me, a lot of this was uh, very new. There's a lot of information there which was new to me. And I think what one, you know, what, what we can take home very quickly um, is just a, a few facts, which are that both Atlas and CMS have narrowed down at the low mass end to a very short range, really, uh, what possible masses they to be at. Now, unfortunately, the most promising ones, and have been for a while, um, but that, that, that tells us maybe that we're looking in the right place now. Exactly. I think we should be really excited about the amount of exclusion we've got. A lot of people hear the word exclusion and they think, oh, bad news. No, it's great news, right? Because as we make the window narrower and narrower, we get closer and closer to discovering the Higgs if it's there. We know where to look now. We've got a very small range to focus on, and we're already seeing some hints of an excess there. What we actually want to see someday is every mass we could look for either excluded or have, have a Higgs there. Uh, but that's not <laughs> what we see yet. What we see Instead, we see a, a, a narrow range, maybe up to uh, 130 GeV, give or take, um, where it could be. Um, and then we see a few different spots, depending on the channel and the experiment, um, where uh, there seem to be more promising excesses. Exactly. I think it would be nice if we could talk in detail about some of these mm -hmm. excesses, right? So, from CMS's side, uh, we saw today a uh, peak at uh, 119 GeV, there's a bump there, there's an excess, and also 124. Um, and one of the things that excites a lot of people is what happens if there are two uh, new particles to be discovered. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a very exciting scenario. Um, so that we yeah, on that. I mean, so, so yeah, so um, one one additional thing you could say about CMS is that um, it was in different channels. It was in this this golden um, ZZ to four leptons channel that showed up at 119 GeV, and then at 124 GeV uh, we saw the two photon channel. Um, and the same two precision channels from Atlas, they both came in around 126, right? Yeah. Um, and that's tantalizingly close to CMS is 124, but it's it's probably not quite the same. Mm -hmm. Although combining these results is very complicated to do right, and you can't just do it chatting afterwards. <laughs> exactly. We've been warned against just simply combining what we get, because it usually gives the wrong answer when that happens. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see the stuff uh, around, like I say, 125 GB, and this excess of 119 would be amazing if we saw something there. Um, I know a lot of players would get excited. <laughs> well, I think I think the important thing to to think about there is, of course, we've we've been playing all along as if we know exactly what we're looking for. We have this one benchmark that's the standard model um, Higgs boson, and there are a lot of things that could be different. So a very simple thing you could do is say, what if there's one Higgs that does all of these fermion masses and another Higgs that does um, electroweak symmetry breaking? Um, which is actually not an unnatural thing to do at all. Now, and that, that very simple, um, sim sim simple is not a helpful word for me to use, <laughs> but in the most obvious way to do that, um, we shouldn't see much of anything yet for at least one of them. Right. So, um, something strange could be going. <laughs> but on the other hand, there's nothing to stop us from seeing particles that don't neatly tie physics up. The Higgs is designed to tie everything up neatly and say we're done with the standard model. What if there's more we just weren't expecting? Right. That's the dream scenario, right? Yeah, that's, that's true. Getting the Higgs, getting even more physics, and having interesting results for another few decades of unexplored physics. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would certainly be very exciting. That's it's how things used to run in particle physics. You know, it's, <laughs> it's the, the famous phrase was, who ordered that? I think it was about the muon. That's right, yeah, that was Robbie speaking about the muon. It's like this the same particle, high mass, who ordered that? A few uh, decades later, we had a standard model with three generations of matter, and that was one of the first hints. But recently, for the past 30, 40 years, we've generally known what was going on and just tried to put it together better and better. So for us as young physicists, 
it would be very exciting if we actually got into a place where we could put them for new things. Yeah, I think it's amazing to consider that the, the Higgs boson was predicted about uh, nearly 50 years ago. And the last big discovery of its kind, of, you know, the new boson was in 1983. So we've been waiting decades for a discovery um, of, of the Higgs. And it looks like now, if, if it's there, we're going to get it very soon. Um, we've not seen it today. We've, we've seen some excess. And sometime in, in the near future, we're going to see something more interesting, I think. Yeah, I think, I think it's important, as you said, to, to not, not get ahead of ourselves too far. Um, what we're seeing is consistent, maybe, with a statistical fluctuation when there, there's nothing under there at all, but it's not, um, it's not extremely likely that that would happen. It's actually a bit unlikely. Uh, what it's more consistent with is that there is a standard model Higgs, um, what, and it's just not quite been discovered yet, and then what we're seeing now is exactly what we'd expect. Something I thought was interesting is Atlas's significance is actually better than if it were a standard model thing. So one right. possibility <laughs> um, is that they've got a, a, a bit lucky and, and seen some extra background on top of their heads right. um, that CMS didn't see, but we'll, we'll see about that Yeah, later. When, when you're dealing with you know less than 10 events, an extra event here or there can really improve your sensitivity. Um, so yeah, it's literally getting lucky sometimes and getting one more event than you expect. That could be increase your statistics by 50%, you see. So, but it's an interesting situation to be in. But if, if we have if we have nothing at all there and we've seen what we saw today, then we've either been very lucky or really more very unlucky about that. Right. Um, so <laughs> I think I think we're enthusiastic um, and hopeful, and it's not quite the same as saying we found anything just yet. Right. I think we should bear in mind what uh, Rob said at the end. You know, we're still taking data. Next year, we're going to get a lot more data, and that's when we'll know the uh, the final answer to this. Have, have a lot of hard work ahead of us, I think. Right, yeah. Getting all of these things again. Everybody's been working very hard up till now. It's not over. We've got Moriond in the uh, uh, early months of next year, and then we've got more data taken in the summer of next year. It's going to give us the answers we want. Okay, thanks, all. Right. I've been Aiden. And I'm Seth. Thank okay. you.